ask people, <laughs> ask people to submit their favorite photographs of landscapes, people, or products for the Suffolk <laughs> Icons <laughs> contest, which was de- designed to promote the country, county, country, county. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I like adding random R's to places. Pirate. It's a county, not a country. <laughs> London's a country too. <laughs> exactly, so you can't talk, Belinda. I'm not talking, I'm laughing. <laughs> You're the one that made the London mess up. I know. <laughs> Two words. Koala song. <laughs> Try me. <laughs> no, no, anyway. No. Anyway. Designed to promote the county as an attractive place to visit. Many local residents joined in the spirit of the contest by nominating traditional images of coastal beach huts, landscapes, historical buildings, and figures like former Ipswich town manager Sir Bobby Robson. But members of the public also nominated Danny Felt, the self-styled crypt crawling, self-styled crypt crawling front man of the notorious death metal band Cradle of Filth, which was formed in Suffolk in 1991. I'm gonna pause in a random place and see if you'll say it. <laughs> I'm reading along. You can't get me. Darn. <laughs> Stampede. <laughs> Records show that Danny Filth. 37, recorded 13,025 votes by having his image clicked on the Suffolk Icons website more than six times the votes recorded for the next most popular icon. The poll of members of the public put the Broom Hill swimming pool a near derelict 1930s former... Basically, they're really pissed off because Danny Filth won. Mm-hmm. Suffolk. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, those people that apparently they have their own country and something about Jesus is a C, a C star star T. Oh, lovely. Yes. yes, and this he won. Well, hang on, what was his last words in that one? I spent the majority of my life either in Ipswich or Woodbridge and Hadley. And I'm in the process of moving house, but to somewhere else in the county. So I guess this is where my heart lies. So in that respect, it's a compliment, really. Although I prefer the po- I prefer a point of ad- pint of adnums myself. Sounds I prefer like- a point too. Apparently, Belinda has had a pint or two. No, just a Mars bar. I'm happy. Or a man's. <laughs> okay. Um. Mm. Spiders offer up useless gifts to have sex, but ladies not duped. From November 14, and this is by Jennifer Walsh. Male nursery web spiders sometimes pay for mating using worthless gifts, with a new study finding the gals are not impressed with the empty offerings. These gifts serve as decoys, worthless bits of flour, cotton, or ant husks wrapped in silk that serve only to distract the female while the males have their way. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. The nuptial gift an insect prey wrapped in silk is a very important trait for mating success. Study researcher Mario... uh, I'll say Jose Albo. A researcher Mm -hmm. at... Oh, my God. In Denmark, (coughs) um, yeah, 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 Uh, males with gifts increase the chances to be accepted by females and also prolong copulation duration. Mm. I'm trying to read it and see if I can say it now. Yeah, so basically the moral of the story is, you know, if you liked it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you're gonna give crap gifts, you're gonna get crap sex. Pretty much. Okay. Learn from this, men. Learn from this. Just because they have eight legs and not three does not make them any different. And if you're having sex with spiders, you need help. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> 
What's even better is I know that at least two of our listeners are deathly afraid of spiders, which makes that even better. Yeah. Those two people would be Janie and Robin. Yay! Eensy weensy Sweet spider. dreams. <laughs> Next. As soon as I can screw my top back on. Pardon? <laughs> 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 oh, you're talking okay. about a drink. Okay. I'm just a little worried there. <laughs> oh, I was talking about a drink? Oh. <laughs> well, then I guess I won't tell you what I was actually doing. Anyway, we'll be okay. The real crisis bothering Europe, and it's not financial. From November 16th. Did I just read one from November 16th? Really? Mm hmm. Darn. Forget about the recession. There's another crisis plaguing Europe. Yes, there's a whole bunch of other countries randomly popping up. <laughs> oh, wait. No, that's not it. My bad. And lawmakers are so worried they're quoting Einstein. Ooh. That's got to be serious. Yes, they're actually trying to sound intelligent. <gasps> Heaven forbid. Sorry. No, no, no. The government cannot sound... No. Bothered by spiking mortality rates. Europe's parliamentarians, yes, have voted overwhelmingly to urge the EU, <laughs> Europe, yes, <laughs> to provide more funding for the, <laughs> shut up, for the beekeeping sector. I got parliamentarian right. Yay. MEPs voted 534 in favor, with 16 against, and 92 abstentions to support research and development in veterinary medicine to save the declining bee population. Wasn't there an episode of Doctor Who like this? Um, I don't know. Was it? I think so. Like, all the bees were gone. Mm. See, everyone, start watching Doctor Who. You'll get an edumacation. And you'll be able to predict the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, that's how I learned that the Queen of England is actually a werewolf. Duh. <laughs> that explains Beekeeping is crucial for our society as pollination plays an essential role in preserving biodiversity yes. mm -hmm. and maintaining sustainable European agriculture and food security, said a Hungarian socialist. Crap. That guy. That dude with the long name, which is actually probably a woman, because that's my luck. Yeah, probably. Albert Einstein once said that without bees, man would live no more than four years. Better data on hives and bee losses were needed, as well as funding for medicines, because pharmaceutical firms were reluctant to invest in a relatively small market, what does that have to do with anything? The European Commission also needed to issue legislative proposals to turn recommendations on pesticides into law, parliamentarians said. Some 84% of Europe's fauna and 76% of agricultural agriculture depend on pollination from bees. You know what I reckon it is? What? Okay, in Europe or at least in some parts of Europe, you are actually supposed to pay a tax if you have a swimming pool. Apparently one of the biggest sellers in Europe, like on any market, is camouflage, yeah, is camouflage covers for your swimming pool so that if they put a helicopter up and they try and do inspections, they can't see your swimming pool from the backyard. So wow, I'm, that's kind of pathetic, actually. Yeah. So I'm thinking probably the bees are going in and drinking this water that they've probably had to use chemicals to keep clean because if they're permanently covered when you're not in them, they're probably getting a bit gungy and gross. Yeah. So if the bees are going down and drinking this pool water with the chemicals in it, it's going to kill the bees. More than likely, that's part of the reason that, and you know, there's so much pollution and so much this and that. Mm hmm And I mean, I know, I know there are places in Europe that, as far as like square mileage goes, 
they're more populated. They're more densely populated. Mm -hmm. People are also a lot closer together. Therefore, you're cutting down on the um, 